D.C., how corrupt was this? Judge Andrew Napolitano just joined Fox News to discuss allegations Senator Rand Paul and one other senator were under the watchful surveillance by the Obama administration. He was very close with the Supreme Court Justice Scalia. He then announced huge news that nobody saw coming. Judge Andrew Napolitano stated that the late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia confided in him that he was under the impression that Barack Obama had put the highest and most important court in the land under the eye of the NSA. Justice Scalia told Napolitano that he frequently thought the court was being watched. And he stated to him that around four or five years ago, Napolitano said, if they had to unmask Senator Paul's name to reveal a conversation he was having with a foreign agent and the foreign agent was hostile to the United States they can do that. That's not what he's talking about. They're talking about unmasking him when he's having a conversation with his campaign manager when he's running in the Republican primary. He went on to say that Obama should be subpoenaed to testify, even though he would lie about it if he saw the unmasked intelligence. The Obama administration watching the Supreme Court means they had no qualms about watching everyone that didn't support every moronic step they made. Constantly selling this nation down the river to our enemies and Obama found it appropriate to watch everyone else because he was untrusting. He was untrusting because he was untrustworthy. It's now wondered that if Scalia was killed to keep things quiet. The autopsy won't be done now, and the late justice deserves to rest in peace. Napolitano making that announcement is just another piece of damning evidence against Obama and his minions. Good job Obama. Way to violate the Constitution every way. Sarah Palin makes very tragic announcement, supporters devastated. Former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin has apparently given up on her son Track Palin because he precedes awful custody war with the mother of his newborn child. As Radar Online stated, Track Palin's, 27 years old, violent behavior was scaring everyone in his life. He's hot-headed, he's out of control and he has anger issues. Said Matthew Loewe, embarrassed father of Track's baby mother Jordan. Matthew added, he's thrown stuff at Jordan, thrown rocks at Jordan, He's even thrown stuff at her when she was holding their baby. Jordan, a mother of his child reported him to police a year ago, after he slammed her in the face, in Wazilla at his parents' home. He even supposedly warned that he will shoot himself with a rifle. Jordan's father Matthew also said that things after that became a lot worse with track, he even threatened his family after they tried to calm him down. As Matthew said, track hates his father Todd. Jordan and Track had an argument one night that it got so out of control she called. And they both came over. He threatened to beat up his dad, saying, Come on old man, you're full of metal now. Matthew then continued saying that Track's parents warned Jordan to run away from their son after they heard she was pregnant with him. Matthew revealed, Before Jordan got pregnant, Todd told her, I'd run if I were you. He also said that family Palins gave up from their son Track Palin. From what Jordan has told me, Todd and Sarah, they don't help him with ST, he said. He threatened to beat his dad up. Do you think they'd help him? Please pray for Sarah Palin as she deals with these difficult family issues. Breaking Virginia Police just admitted Trump was right. President Trump was slammed by liberals after denouncing the display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides in the aftermath of the Charlottesville, Virginia Unite the Right rally. The mainstream media was in an uproar over President Trump's statement, claiming that he was creating a false equivalence between right-wing extremists and those counter-protesting. However, Trump's statement is consistent with local police reports. We were hoping that it would not elevate to this level of the violence that we witnessed amongst the participants in the crowds, on all sides. They were throwing bottles, they were throwing soda cans with cement in them, said a Virginia police spokesperson, according to the Independent Journal Review. Karen Geller, the Virginia police spokesperson, went on to explain that protesters were launching chemicals into the crowd, without singling out either side. 
Videos capturing the Charlottesville protests makes it abundantly clear that both sides arrived at Emancipation Park looking for a fight. White nationalists and Ku Klux Klan stood on one side, with Black Lives Matter and Antifa protesters on the other. Both were armed with makeshift shields and bats. Even left-wing New York Times reporter Cheryl Gay Stolberg called out left-wing violence. The hard left seemed as hate-filled as alt-right. I saw a club wielding Antifa beating white nationalists being led out of the park, she tweeted. White supremacy is a hoard and backward ideology that has no business in a modern society. However, white supremacists enjoy the same rights as all other Americans. It is easy to defend speech that one agrees with, but freedom of expression is truly tested when even despicable speech must be defended. Neo-Nazis are despicable, but racist ideology should be beaten with ideas, not bats. If white supremacists are the intellectually stunted people that many liberals assume they are, then it should be effortless to vanquish them in the marketplace of ideas. Americans should not settle disagreements with violence. The ideas of neo-Nazis are horrid, senseless, and full of hate. Confronting them with violence only exemplifies the very ideology they espouse. The left is making this bad situation worse. By refusing to acknowledge that the Antifa and Black Lives Matter protesters are just as guilty as the white supremacists for bringing violence to Virginia, the left is only expanding the gulf dividing the left and the right. As the left continues to muddy the water, referring to moderate Republicans as alt-right extremists, it becomes increasingly easy for moderates to embrace extremist views. The more the mainstream media refers to President Trump as a racist, the more average Americans are willing to accept the term for themselves. When characterizing half the country as neo-Nazis, the left further pushes their victimhood ideology. The truth is, very few people in this country agree with neo-Nazis and the alt-right. But it's awfully convenient for the left to pretend many people do. That is the only way to justify their indignant cries that the country is racist, they're victimized, and the government must protect them. A young person hearing this nonsense will be discouraged from ever learning what conservatives really think because they've only heard all conservatives are neo-Nazis and are worthy of beatings with bats. This is just one way that the ungodly left is dividing the Durham Sheriff's deputies arrest woman who allegedly helped pull down Confederate statue. Durham County Sheriff's deputies arrested Dakia Thompson on Tuesday alleging she climbed the ladder and placed the rope around the neck of the Confederate statue that was subsequently pulled down. On Monday, WNCN named Thompson as a protester in Urim when the statue came down. They quoted her saying, People can be mobilized and people are angry and when enough people are angry, we don't have to look to politicians to sit around in air conditions and do nothing when we can do things ourselves. Reports soon emerged that Durham County Sheriff's officials videoed the protesters pulling down the statue but made no arrests, even though the statue was on county property. On Tuesday morning, Durham County Sheriff Mike Andrews issued a statement, saying that his office was using the video footage to identify protesters who had taken part in the incident. Andrews posted his statement to Facebook, part of which said, I am grateful the events that unfolded Monday evening did not result in serious injury or the loss of life, but the planned demonstration should serve as a sobering example of the price we all pay when civil disobedience is no longer civil. Before the protest, my staff met with our community partners to discuss how to safely and appropriately respond to the protest. County leaders were aware of the risk of damage to the Confederate statute, as well as, the potential risk of injury to the public and officers should deputies attempt to control the crowd. Collectively, we decided that restraint and public safety would be our priority. As the sheriff, I am not blind to the offensive conduct of some demonstrators nor will I ignore their criminal conduct. With the help of video captured at the scene, my investigators are working to identify those responsible for the removal and vandalism of the statue. ABC 11 reports that Thompson was arrested Tuesday afternoon and charged with disorderly conduct by injury to a statue, class 2 misdemeanor damage to real property, statue as a fixture, 
Class I misdemeanor participation in a riot with property damage in excess of $1,500. Class H felony inciting others to riot where there is property damage in excess of $1,500. Class F felony before her arrest. Thompson described the Confederate statue as a symbol of white supremacy but she did not mention that the Confederacy was a Democrat nation, run by Democrat slaveholders, who fought a civil war against the Republicans who secured emancipation. Many of those same Democrats then launched the Ku Klux Klan to keep recently freed blacks from voting Republican in the Condoleezza Rice has an important message for the liberals. Former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice is one of the most admirable people in America. She is well-educated and accomplished woman. So, when she is talking people actually listen to what she has to say. Yesterday she appeared on Fox and Friends to promote her new book, Democracy, Stories from the Long Road to Freedom. She is not ashamed of America's past, the good and the bad, which means she is not ashamed of slavery and the Civil War. So. When she came co-host Brian Kilmeade had few strict questions for her, I want to talk about where your book starts, and that's our constitution. As an African American woman, do you see yourself in this constitution? Do you think that, when we look at nine of our first twelve presidents as slave owners, should we start taking their statues down and say, we're embarrassed by you? In a word, no, Rice responded and continued. I am a firm believer in keep your history before you. So, I don't actually want to rename things that were named after slave owners. I want us to have to look at those names, and realize what they did, and be able to tell our kids what they did and for them to have a sense of their own history. Rice, who is a senior fellow at the Stanford School of Business, taught the liberals one significant history lesson, when you start wiping out your history, sanitizing your history to make you feel better. It's a bad thing. Rice then told a story from back in 2005 when she stood in the Ben Franklin room of the State Department and was administered an oath of office by a Jewish woman Supreme Court Justice, that's the story of America. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and other slave owners were people of their times. What we should celebrate is that from the Jeffersons and the Washingtons as slave owners. Look at where we are now. Please share this post on Facebook if you agree with Condoleezza Rice. What is your opinion on this? Scroll down to comment. Breaking McCain Busted Multiple Hill staffers confirmed last night McCain was heard laughing WDMs and remarked, Let's see Donald make America great again now. Prior to John McCain's vote against the repealing of Obamacare, Bernie Sanders signaled to Senator Jean Shaheen watch this. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predictions. 